name is Tracy Cook and welcome to the podcast series Victim to Victory. This series gives a voice to those that have overcome obstacles in all forms that dare greatly to share their real stories. Amazing humans like our guest we have today that have seen hope and risen above those adversities to become victorious, that now support and inspire others to do the same. And today we are giving a voice to Tasha Wilson. Welcome to Victim to Victory. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. We're very grateful to have you. Now, Tasha is going to get into her story in just a moment. And uh, Tasha W, Messenger, of hope we want to hear all about who the messenger of hope is tasha where does your story start oh goodness um so the best way to explain my life's journey is unconventional i want to say the way that i really discovered who i am my why it unfortunately started with tragedy Um, At the age of 16, I unexpectedly lost my father from a work-related incident, and it really shook me to the core so much that I really didn't fathom what life would look like beyond that situation. Um, You know, growing up in a small town community where everyone knew our family, um, everyone knew exactly who was related to whom, it was pretty devastating for our life to kind of go on display the way that it did. And so for me, I felt like I've lost a sense of power and control because now everyone was wondering what our next move would look like. You know, how me, my mom, my brother, how we would respond, how we would navigate in life after that. And so being as close knit as we were, it was very intrusive, you know, um, with people just kind of looking at us under a microscope. And I didn't really like that. And so for me, the best way I thought that I could deal with that is to go to college. Um, A lot of people just think I went to college because, you know, that's typically what you're supposed to do once you graduate high school, right? It's either get a job or go to college. But for me, that was actually my escape plan. It was kind of like, you know, I wanna go somewhere where no one really knows my backstory, where no one can kind of prejudge me a little bit. Um, I just want to be able to create a space for myself. And that way, if people wanna connect with me, it's because they're getting to know me, not because they caught a glimpse of my story before I got there. And so, unfortunately, Another tragic situation happens. Um, I get sexually assaulted by um, an acquaintance. And I think for me, what was really disheartening was that it was premeditated, Um, you know, and you can tell that he was not a rookie at this. It's like he already had the plan set up. He knew what he was going to do. And so to actually be in a situation where I'm now, you know, given tape to cover my screams, I'm pinned back. Um, And for him to literally have his way with with me without my permission, it really left me broken. And honestly, every emotion that I could ever feel, I just became robotic. Like I didn't wanna feel anymore. I didn't wanna exist anymore. Um, I carried guilt and shame and walked around in fear for like 12 years after that incident because shortly after, him and his friend stalked me to kind of make sure I kept my mouth shut and didn't say anything. And so for me, it led me to becoming hyper aware of my surroundings. Like, you know, if someone is walking too close to me, even now someone's walking too close to me or, you know, making sure that my brother knows exactly where I am. We share our location with one another, um, with our iPhones, you know, just making sure that I'm thinking five steps ahead now because of what happened. And, Honestly, it got to the point of me really experiencing dead in relationships, I'm tired of feeling unloved, unwanted, I'm tired of hiding from myself. Um, I said, you know what? The only way that I can really beat this or no longer allow him to have power over me is to conquer the strength within. And so what I did is that I turned my situations from turning lemons into lemonade, or as I say sometimes, lemon pound cake. Um, (laughs) And I said, you know what? 
who were you before this incident happened? What value did you have to your voice before this happened? And why are you still allowing this person to live rent-free in your head? And so I had to go back to what I remembered, you know, the values that my parents instilled in me and what they've always told me, you are powerful, you are a warrior, you are loved, you know, you are important. What you have to offer to the world is vital. And so I had to go back to what I remembered, back to my foundation to really start, you know, shifting my mindset and say, okay, am I going to allow this situation to define me or I'm going to really lean into my authentic self and say, this situation may have happened to me, but it's not who I am. That is so powerful. And I'm so sorry you've had to go through that, but I'm so proud of you for having that mindset, but still being hyper aware almost as well, because we still have to be aware of our surroundings and that never goes away. And the mental challenges, I mean, holding that secret for 12 years, I mean, yeah. uh, what other challenges during that 12 years? Um, you said you had the dead end relationships and you didn't feel loved. Um, mm -hmm. How did that play out in your head for you mindset wise and self love wise, if you don't mind me asking, um, Tasha? Yeah, um, honestly, I felt like I was damaged goods. I'm like, I have too much baggage for anyone to fully accept everything that comes with me. Because you know how sometimes, you know, everyone has something, right, that they bring into a relationship. But I just felt like no one would understand it um, or no one would see beyond that incident because I challenged, you know, um, with seeing beyond that, right? So I'm like, okay, someone else is going to be like, I don't really feel like dealing with the remnants of that because, you know, when that year comes around and that season of when it happened, you kind of have flashbacks like, oh my gosh, this is, this is so not good. Why do I feel like this? Why am I in a little funk a little bit, you know? And so really having someone that would be patient and compassionate to really understand in the patience, to know that there's just certain things that I don't enjoy doing because it's going to remind me of that. And so um, it was a mental prison, honestly. Um, I didn't feel like I was good enough for anyone. Um, I really had issues with um, finding beauty and who I am. Like mirrors were no longer existent. Um, and I was someone who loved the camera. And so it was just like, I don't even want to see myself because I don't recognize who I am anymore. Um, I would wear baggy clothes and feeling like if I make myself look less attractive, less appealing, then I won't experience this again. And so just thinking about those decisions, because for a while, my mom was like, why don't you show off what you have? Why are you hiding? You know, and, um, and she's like, you can show what you have in a tasteful way, right? And I was just like, I don't want anyone to see anything at this point, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking in my mind that it was my fault. And that is so not the case at all. So reversing that thought process to say, what happened to me had everything to do with him. It had nothing to do with me, right? And so it's not my responsibility to take ownership of what happened. And, you know, for me, that whole self-love, it I really had to be honest with myself to provide language to what took place. You know, I would just say, oh, you know, I was violated. But to actually name it for what it is, I was sexually assaulted. And to really identify how I felt in that moment and acknowledge that. So I think self-awareness was very critical for me to really start that self-love journey to say, it's okay to feel like this. It's okay to respond this way, but what are you going to do after you acknowledge where you are and really confront the insecurities that are associated with this situation? Definitely. And that just goes a lot, goes to say for a lot of personal growth, and a lot of um, inner work as well to yeah. get you to that place where you've almost self-healed, but you're still aware. And yeah. that takes a lot uh, to get to that place. And how did your mum and your brother, did they support you through this as well? 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so my brother, he's older. And so you know how that is. We have an older sibling. They're mm-hmm. very protective. And my brother was so mad, um, you know, because it's just kind of like, why would someone think that they have that authority or that right to do that to someone? And so he was very frustrated. Um, he really wanted to get back at the guy. And, you know, I told Understandable. him, I said, yep. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, I think it might cause more harm than help because I already have this ball of emotions that are going on. And then now I don't want you to get in trouble as a byproduct of what happened. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I told him, I said, if anything, I just really need you to be here for me, hold space for me when I need it. Um, and, you know, just be a listening ear. And so he was able to step in and do that. Um, same with my mom. My mom um, blamed herself at first because, you know, she was like, is it something that I did? Did I drop the ball as a parent? Because one thing that in our household, our parents had always taught us, you know, to be trusting of people and to treat people the way we want to be treated. And I'm like, no, mom, you know, I went through that that phase myself thinking, what did I do wrong? What did I signal that I wasn't conscious of? And I said, it had nothing to do with you. You know, mm-hmm. it was everything to do with him. And I had to just kind of um, reaffirm her to let her know that she did an amazing job, you know, with the tools that she had to be that parent for my brother and I, it had nothing to do with that. So um, after a while, she finally got it, you know, it was just like, okay, it, it took some time to process. But in the same token, she was still my mom. She was still supportive. Um, she was very understanding, very patient. Like if there were moments, um, like for me, boundaries was a big thing. And she understood the root of that. Like, okay, she's reinforcing boundaries. Like if it were with other people or if I felt like someone tried to push the limit with friendship, she would say, okay, I understand why you're now being hyper aware of what's going on because Once you feel like you are no longer in control in a situation, you do everything that you can to get that control back when it comes to who you are, um, what you tolerate, what you accept, and what you don't accept. That is so true. And some great tips and practical tips as well as those insights that you've shared with us here. Now, what are you doing in the world today? I'm excited to hear. (laughs) So this is the lemonade and the lemon pound cake part. Um, (laughs) So I've always been extremely introverted. Like as a child, I was always very shy. Um, It's so funny that women who knew me as a child, they're like, oh my gosh, we love who you've blossomed into um, because they know my brother would like speak for me and things like that. It was, it's quite hilarious Um, if you hear old stories, but now, um, I share my story on various platforms. I am a member of the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network Speakers Bureau, and um, that's short for RAIN, and it's the um, world's largest anti-sexual organization that really talks about um, prevention. It talks about education um, and awareness and really promoting um, a space for other survivors like myself, um, who's really... Um, had to go through life trying to learn how to heal, try to learn how to navigate again and really understand who they are after the assault. And so I love being a part of that network because not only do I get that support in-house, but now I'm able to share my story to others and um, help them understand that they're not by themselves. And outside of that, I'm an author. Um, I published three books. I actually just finished my fourth one that will be published later this year and um, again it just gives me that space to connect with people that I may never see in person um, on a deeper intimate level I kind of invite them into my world where the themes that are correlated with these books really talk about um, identity purpose self-love um, self-worth and then ultimately um, self-awareness and how you can really live life after trauma and how people can really get to know who you are beyond the surface and then of course I am a coach and um, a speaker and so I go to like different um, events Um, I also do group coaching where I come together with millennial women um, really to teach them the importance of really um, exploring the power of fearlessness 
um, you know, really unlocking the treasure that's within and knowing that they're valuable and knowing that the things that they've experienced doesn't diminish their worth. Oh, it doesn't diminish your worth and living life after trauma. You are a world changer. You're an inspirer. You're a, you're just a powerhouse superwoman. I love you sharing these messages of hope with people who really need to hear it and really changing and saving lives as well. What kind of message would you like to leave the audience on today, Tasha? So this is something that I tell myself daily, and I think that it'll be extremely helpful um, to the listeners. Um, always remember that your life has purpose, your voice has value, and embrace the greatness within. Wow, it's powerful. Absolutely powerful. It has been our pleasure to have you here. And thank you so much for being brave to share your story as well, Tasha. We'll be sharing where to connect with you. You are so appreciated. And you can find the Victim to Victory podcast series on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and our Facebook group. Please subscribe, share, and comment to help be the change that the world needs, just like Tasha Wilson is. Follow her. She is amazing. And let me leave you with a message of figure out who you are and do it on purpose. Thank you so much for your time.